So the VGG network, which comes from the visual geometric group, that's VGG, of the Department of Engineering Science at the University of Oxford. And then this paper was developed by Karen Simon Young and Andrew Zizarman. They called it very deep convolutional networks for large scale image recognition. It shows here is published in 2015, but this was actually used for the ImageNet challenge of 2014. So in this work, they investigate the effect of convolutional network depth, very important, on its accuracy in the large scale image recognition setting. Our main contribution is a tour of evaluation of networks of increasing depth using an architecture with very small, that's three by three convolutional filters, which shows that a significant improvement of the prior art configurations can be achieved by pushing the depth to 16 or 19. That's why we have VGG 16 and VGG 19. So basically they're telling us here that they built this VGG which has 16 to 19 layers. This finding were the basis of our ImageNet challenge in 2014 where our team secured the first and the second places in the localization and classification tracks respectively. Now on the localization track, what I mean is the model has to be able to see that this dock is found exactly at this position on this image. Whereas with the classification, all he has to do is to see that there is a dock on this image. We go straight to the model architecture, which we could see down here. So we have this different component architectures or configurations. This is the 16 weight layers, 16 weight layers, 9 and weight layers. So this is what we call VGG 16 and then VGG 19. So let's get back. Now during training, the input to our confidence is a fixed 224 by 224 RGB image. The only pre-processing we do is subtracting the mean RGB values computed on the training set from each pixel. And then you know here yeah, that the receptive field is 3 by 3 that's we are working with 3 by 3 filters instead of 5 by 5 filters as the LUNET and then the AlexNet models had been using previously. And then in one of the configurations they used 1 by 1 com filters which can be seen as a linear transformation of the input channels followed by non-linearity. So this non-linearity can be a ReLU, a Sigmoid or a Tang. But in this case, you could see from here, they say they use the ReLU activation function. So it's not shown for brevity. So that's why you don't have to, you don't see it here. But they use the ReLU activation function for this nonlinear function. Then the convolutional stride is fixed to one pixel. That's stride of one. The padding is such that the spatial resolution is preserved. So here we're dealing with same padding. That is the pattern one for three by three filters. Now recall that we have seen that for us to maintain the spatial resolution, the pattern should be equals the filter number minus one divided by two. And so since we have filter of three, three minus one is two, and two divided by two is one. That's why the pattern is one, such that the spatial resolution is preserved. And then special pooling is carried out by five max pooling layers, which follows some of the conf layers. Note that not all conf layers are followed by max pooling. Max pooling is performed by two by two pixel windows with stride two. So here we have a pooling of two and stride two. And then the third, so we could have here the stack of conf layers followed by the fully connected layers. And then the first two have 4096 channels and then the third performs the 1000 way ILS VRC classification and those contains a thousand channels that's one for each class or category and then we have as usual the final layer the softmax layer so right here we have the confnet configuration let's just focus on this VGG 16 where we have 16 weight layers. The input, 220, 
24 by 224 by 3 since we have an RGB image. Then followed by this conf 3 that's 64 layers or 64 filters. So we have 64 3 by 3 filters, 64 3 by 3 filters, 128 3 by 3 filters, 128 3 by 3 filters. But before this, we had the max pool. So we have the max pool here, then the max pool, and then this 256 3 by 3 filters repeated thrice. And then the max pool, and then 512 3 by 3 filters repeated thrice. And then 512 3 by 3 filters repeated thrice. And before this, we had the max pool. After this, again, we have a max pool, the fully connected, the fully connected, the fully connected, and finally the soft max. So looking at the code, we have this VGG class which we've built. We have the init, the constructor, and then we have this call method. So basically what we're doing here is we're defining the different conf layers, batch normalization as batch normalization is used in this paper. And obviously batch normalization helps in speeding up training. And then we have the drop out to reduce the effect of overfitting. And then we have the drop out parameter, which we could define right here. So we have it to be 0 0.5. But now, depending on how much drop out you want or how much you want to reduce the effect of overfitting, you could increase the value for the drop out. So we could take this drop out to be 0 0.9 if we want to considerably reduce the effect of overfitting. Then if we have a value of say 0 0.1, then here we just want to do a little reduction on the effect of overfitting. So we have this conf layers. We have the two 64 by 64, or rather two 64 filter 3 by 3 conf layers, which is actually this, which we define right here. We have 64 3 by 3 activation relu regularization pattern same as we had seen already and then we could give it a name so we call it conf11 so say that it's of the block one and it's the first and then the next conf layer is conf12 so this is our first block next block our first second third fourth fifth so this is the first block first conf layer first block second conf layer this is repeated we have defined this conf11 conf12 which is this followed by conf21 which is this 128 3 128 filters and there are 3 by 3 filters 128 3 by 3 we move on to 256 3 by 3 times 3 512 3 by 3 times 3 512 3 by 3 times 3 so with this now we could simply in this call method define exactly how the operations are to be carried out so is basically some sort of functional API. So right here we have an input X. So we're supposing we have an input X. We pass it through conf11, then the batch num, then drop out, then conf12, then max pool. So we have to find a max pool right from here. And the pooling size is 2, 2. Now the stride by default is 2. So that's why it's not included here. So that's it. We have done this. We have the max pool. And then the next, we go in, passing the x, that's this x, which is outputted from here. And the next block, conf21, batch norm, drop out, conf22, max pool. Now, another way of doing this more efficiently is by defining a custom conf2d layer where we have the conf layer and then the batch num so instead of repeating every time this conf layer batch num we could simply just call it a custom conf 2d so right here we could come in each of this so we have here instead of cost instead of conf this we just have custom conf and then we take this off and then right here we call this it actually remains the same since it's conf but we take off the batch num we have since the custom conf takes care of that already. So there we go. So we could repeat all this and then we have the similar output. 
So that's it. We could define this custom layer and then apply it in this VGG model. We'll take this off. So from TensorFlow that carries the layers, import layer, then from TensorFlow that carries the layers, import model. Or rather, from TensorFlow that carries import model. So there we go. So that's it for this VGG model. Then here the others actually explain why it is preferable to work with this 3x3 three three filters instead of the 5x5 five five and 7x7 seven seven filters as other previous models which came up before this model or this paper. We had seen this already in the slides. Now look at the training. So you could always take time and go through the paper which you can find on the papers with code side. Then looking at training, training is carried out by optimizing the multinomial logistic regression objective using mini batch gradient descent that's based on back propagation with momentum. And then the others specify the batch size, which was 256, momentum 0 0.9, regularization, that's the L2 regularization set to 5 times 10 to the negative 4 drop our regularization for the first two fully connected layers we had a drop out ratio set to 0 0.5 learning rate was initially set to 10 to the negative 2 and then decreased by a factor of 10 when the validation set accuracy stopped improving so in total the learning rate was decreased three times and the learning was stopped after 370,000 iterations that's 74 epochs so you could continue reading and then you have the results at the end so generally in this paper is we have the results at the end and then here we could see clearly based on the different configurations that's from a right up to e we have the top one percent error on the top five percent error now top one percent basically means if you have an image and in that image there is a dog and then our model predicts a dog meaning that our model says that the dog has the highest probability based on the inputted image then in that case we are dealing with a top 1% accuracy and then if our model doesn't actually predict that the image or based on that image it's a dog found in it but in the top five probabilities we have a dog on the top five probabilities the class dog is found in there then there we talk about top five percent accuracy so that's why generally for this error the top five percent is less than the top one percent because it's easier for the model to predict that a given object is found in the image by considering its first five values as compared to considering only the highest probability which is the top one percent so more precisely in this formula of the accuracy where each time the predicted values equals the target value we add one so if for all the data set the predicted values equals the target value then we'll sum this one m times and m divided by m is one one by hundred will give us a hundred percent accuracy and then when y pred is not the same as y target we have a zero instead right here so basically this is the accuracy we've been used to working with that's the top one percent accuracy and then with the top five percent accuracy we are a little bit more lenient as we don't only consider just the value with the highest probability but we could consider the value with the highest probability the second highest the third the fourth and then the fifth highest probability so there's a type of year we've done this two twice so 
actually instead of just this one we have now five different possibilities and if any of this hold we have a one so this means if let's say y pred 3 is our target then this is going to consider this as one whereas here we've considered it as a zero and we've not summed it or we've not added it up to give the final accuracy so that's how we differentiate the top five percent with the top one percent and that's why generally the top five percent accuracy is greater than the top one percent accuracy as of the top five percent we are a little bit more lenient as compared to the top one percent